I'm recording as well, so I can start, right? No, nope. yes, please. Sweet. Okay. Uh, please, again, how do I pronounce your name? <laughs> what say? Yeah, no problem. So, actually, my full name is um, Igwemi Niv Bagwemi, right? Well, my, okay. for short, you can just call me Niv. So, my short name is yeah. N-I-Y-I. So, that's um, Niv. Yeah. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, that's that's actually how I've been pronouncing it. I've been pronouncing it Niv. I just wanted to make sure it's correct. Um, yeah. And I think I just want to start off by saying thank you. Um, yeah, no problem. For taking time out of your schedule, I know you are a busy guy. Yeah, uh, with a lot going on, is crazy. Busy. So thankfully, thankfully, yeah, everybody's busy. Yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm grateful to have you on the show. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for taking time. Thank out. you. Thank you for having me. Also, it's it's a, it's a pleasure. It's an honor. Yeah. Uh, and just before we start, I think I know what you do. I think I've looked a little bit into your work, not extensively. Yeah. Uh, but I think to, to just kick us off, please tell us who Nee is as a person, as a creative. Just yeah. introduce yourself so that people can get an idea of what we're going to be talking about today. So my name is Amni um, Fagwemi. Um, I'm a photographer and a cinematographer based here in Nigeria. Um, I've been a photographer for about three years. And while a cinematographer in the past year, I have been learning cinematography. So I'm not yet perfect. I'm not yet where I want to be, um, but I'm still learning as much as I can. So I've been into photography here in Nigeria. I've been able to get some work outside of the country also. So I have a little experience in photography and mm-hmm. also in cinematography. Mm-hmm. I mean, you talk yeah. about how <laughs> you're still not perfect and you're still not where you are, but I've seen your work and I'll definitely leave a link in the description for people to check out because it's amazing. But yes, thank you. I mean, with my standards and I think with a lot of people's standards, you're going to see your work and recommend it as top tier. You know what I mean? So you say yeah. you're not where you want to be, but a lot of people look at it and say it's amazing. Uh, but for someone who's been in yeah. it for only Thank about you. a year, what do you think has been the key factors in being able to get you to where you are in terms of experience in such, in such a short space of time? Yeah. Okay, so, so there's this um, quote that says, um, repetition comes before mastery. So that's really what has helped me. It's not... I'm not really talented per se, so I just make sure I learn something and I repeat it until I'm very good at it. So that's that's one thing that really helps me um, to get to where I am. So every single day I have held my camera, every single day I've held my drone. So it's just something. So just use it, edit on your laptop, no, no matter, um, even if you don't post it, just ensure you do something um, towards that craft and you become a master at it. That's, that's a very good piece of advice, and I do agree with that. I think I've heard something or read somewhere, uh, something about working at something for about 10,000 hours will turn you into a pro at it or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah. time invested, I think, is one of the most important resources. It's one of the res- important investments into anything and one of your most important yeah. resources. And I think even the way we charge as creators, as photographers, as videographers, yeah. we charge according to how much time it's going to take us to produce this piece of work. So you yeah. putting time into this thing, uh, the way you're saying, uh, it's not a shock or a surprise to see how you've been able to grow and become so good at what you do in, just, in such a short space of time. Uh, and yeah. you also Thanks. talk about being a photographer only for the last three years. Um, what were you doing before content creation? What was me up to and what led you to take up photography full time and be do, being do, now having to do it for the last three years? I myself... Um... I studied engineering, mechanical engineering to be precise. So um, I actually have a, yeah, <laughs> I actually have a lot of experience um, in the mechanical engineering field and also in the project engineering field. Yeah, so um, for the past three years, I've been into photography, but about a year um, out of those three years, um, I've been working, um, I had a nine to five in quotes. So it's something I really enjoyed, but at the same time, it didn't really work out. Um, and I prefer um, photography to the nine to five. Yeah. So do you want me to go into detail? That's the nine to five. I mean, I mean, you can definitely go into detail if you'd like, but it's, it's, it's quite surprising. Uh, and you're not the first person I've sat down with the first creative. I've sat down with musicians and photographers and different kinds of people yeah. who are very very much educated people so it's not like <laughs> photography is like a second choice thing yeah or you know they're trying to make a hustle these are people who could literally be working 
uh, in the corporate world and have normal nine to fives, but the creativity was just calling me. You know, I've sat down with yes, right. lawyers, mm-hmm. uh, people who are engineers like you, mm-hmm. and it's quite quite mind blowing to think that someone would <laughs> invest so much time, I guess, yeah. into a, not an easy degree. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Definitely. Late nights, like five and years. the hard work, yeah. and then you kind of yeah, it's it's a it's a long time, and it's. Uh, a lot that that's invested in it and then just kind of leave that and pursue creativity. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with yeah. that, but what kind of drives you specifically or what kind of drove you specifically to leave that and chase the creative side of life? Okay. So, yeah. So, um, so, so one thing, um, that made me to actually start the nine to five was, um, because I didn't learn this early on, um, how to convert my, um, skill. That's photography skill into um, remuneration. That's money. So it's something I believe every creator needs to learn um, in the initial stages when they start um, either photography, videography, anything you want to do. So it's something that will be able to determine the steps you take. So most people have a nine to five, not because they love their job. I'm not. I'm not trying to talk down on a nine to five person. I believe it's. it's um, they're really making a lot of impact to the community and to the society. Um, but most people have a nine to five just because of the money. It's not. It's not really giving um um a lot of us. So like when I when I had my nine to five, I had some sort of fulfillment. But I knew that there was something I wanted to be doing. Something that wants. Something that was going to wake me up at three a.m. to learn something to edit. So yeah, so I know I haven't yet, I haven't made the, the wrong choice. It's just something I know that was the right thing for me to do to like pursue photography and then um, leave the nine to five. Okay, so now now you're saying that the key thing here was learning how to turn your craft and your art and your talent into remuneration, into money. Uh, and what have been the key aspect or the key point is if you were to hold a seminar right now <laughs> uh, or make a presentation, what key things would you speak about? What things are important as a creative person speaking to other creative people to look out for, to be aware of when you're turning your art into money? Okay, so the first thing I'll say is um, um, start with a lot of collaboration. So collaboration mm. in terms of start with your close circle. So a lot of people go out the Let's say they go and start looking for um, um, models like that outside their creative circle. You can start with some friends. Just show, so it's more or less advertising, showing the world what you can do. So start with that. You there's no way. Okay, sorry, not not no way, right? It's gonna be really hard to start with um, paid work because nobody really knows what you can do until they see what you have done before and in order to show what you have done before you need to do something that is free and of a collaborative service with someone so have a close yeah. circle that you always collaborate with and then you have to okay. show people what you can do then people will contact you mm-hmm. i love that and i think uh yeah. collaborations is a very big part of my i guess philosophy or my ideology yeah sure I believe so much in working with other people, uh, not just for mm-hmm. what you're talking about, you know, getting yourself out there, but there's so much that can be learned from other people. Um, Definitely. I think you can give three photographers the same lighting, the same camera, the same model, the same setting, and the same amount of time, yeah. but they will all produce different images. Different like, results, they will yeah. all produce something different, and you'll be like, what happened? Did you guys really use the same gear? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's because people yeah. do it differently. Uh, and that's the beauty about the arts. It's that mm-hmm. everyone sees everything differently. Everybody chooses to use the gear differently. And so for me, yeah. sitting down and chatting to or sitting down and working with different other creators in my space, it's like I learn so much. I get a different perspective. Uh, but you also yeah. have to be very humble in that, right? Like <laughs> mm-hmm. you can work with yeah, certain sure, people definitely. and if if you're not careful, you always kind of feel like ah, you're not doing it the way I do it, so it's wrong. Um, yeah. But if you yeah. have an open mind, you're o- you're very capable and open to seeing things very differently uh, from the way you used mm-hmm. to doing things. You know. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I appreciate that advice, and I'm really gonna uh, leech off of that. Um, but you also yeah. mentioned earlier when we were speaking uh, about how yeah. you've had the opportunity to do jobs out of the country. Out of Nigeria. Yes. Um, how has that experience been for you? I mean, it's it's been all right. It's been good. So, um, fortunately for me, um, 
I also specialize in travel photography. So um, I get a lot of inquiries um, from day to day on um, how much I charge, um, whether I'm available in social so and so country from social so and so time. But there are some clients that are um, willing to travel you out, which is something I believe every photographer um, would love and every creative would love. So yeah, some clients are willing to travel. Yeah. So once they see the quality of your work, so they'll be willing to travel you out at, at, um, at their own cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is, so is it something that you look yeah. forward to? Is it something that you look forward to in terms of which countries would you love to visit? Which countries would you like to go and make content in? Yeah, sure. So, so the thing is, I already have like my own bucket list of countries. So, um, okay, let's hear. I've been able to shoot. <laughs> yeah. So let me say, um, I'll start with African countries. So I know I want to go to okay. Kenya. I want to go to Senegal. I want to go to South Africa. Um. Yay! Please come down, bruh. <laughs> come down to South Africa. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'll be essay soon, hopefully, as long as mm -hmm. more carries me there, or maybe a mini vacation. Yeah. yeah. So maybe the done. other two countries, yeah, the other two countries are um, Egypt and I think Iran. I just I'm, I'm I, I need to go okay. the last the last one. Yeah. Okay. And 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 why yeah. these countries? No. So the thing is, I've seen them. Um, I've seen pictures of them on social media. Um, a lot of them mm. have like good aesthetics, and they have a um, nice. Mm -hmm. Um. A nice um, environment, nice natural um, reserves and stuff. So especially mm -hmm. Kenya, yeah. No, they they definitely do, and uh, you see it a lot uh, on Instagram. You see it a lot on the socials. It's almost how yeah. I make my decisions as well as to where I would love to go and visit. It's you see the kind of content that people are making there, and they're like, I would love to take something like that to be yeah, in that space definitely. and let my mind explore. You know, I think it's such a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. Um, yeah, but what's the most favorite project you've worked on? I've seen you've done quite a number of things in the last three years, uh, photography uh, and video. Uh, you have to have one that is your favorite, the one that you always think about and look back at, and you're like, "Yo, I'm really proud of how uh -huh. this came out." Which project is that? Yeah. Um. So maybe I have um about two in particular. So it's um. Yeah. Yeah, so it's um it's a video project. So fortunately, they were shot here in Nigeria. Um, the reason why I'm so proud of how it came out is no, we were able to tell a story, and also we were able to show like the beauty that we have here in Abuja, Nigeria. So if you go to my page, um, the first one is titled um Sunset Drive, and the second one, okay, they actually oh, three, I know total. that one. Oh, I know yeah. that one. It's the one with the two mm -hmm. gents and they've got the suits on and yeah, there's exactly. a white car. Oh, dang, yeah. that was fire. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah, so so it took a lot of planning, but I mean, it worked out, worked out very well. So so that one, um, we also have um, the um, runaway with the two models on the bicycle. On the bicycle, oh my days. Yeah. Yo. Then I think, <laughs> then the last one is um, um, Living Life on the Edge. So that was shot earlier this year also. So we're able to tell like um, tell a story on how um, Abuja is not just this place that people say to come. It's not only good roads we have. We also like we also have um, good scenery. Mm. Yeah. And how big are the teams that you kind of work it with on projects like these? Yeah. So um. So the thing is, this is my own preference, right? So I like to I like to keep my team my team as small as possible. Not because not because I don't like not because I don't like working with people, but um also you save time, you save resources, and also you save um um money you get. So the smaller the team, the more resources you you save. But also you, there has to be a balance. You can't say I I would never shoot any of any of what I've done right. I would never do it on my own. You get so I have like a team of myself. Um, I have like an assistant videographer. Then we have someone that is there for sound engineering, but not every single time. Then we have the models. Then we have the makeup artist. Then. Mm -hmm. No, but you're right. Um, I think most importantly, what you said there is that you can't do these things on your own. <laughs> uh, it would be quite intense if you 
tried to tackle some of the jobs uh, and some of the creative concepts by yourself, it's almost nearly impossible. Uh, and that's why all these different people specialize in things like that, sound engineers, makeup artists. They, that is what they do and they do it best. Um, but also you mentioned a very key thing, sound very much like a project manager type of answer. Uh, like the smaller the team, the less the cost, the less the time, the less the hustle. You know, you deal with less names, you deal with less people. And communication is also easier to, to go through the entire team. Um, so I love that. And I appreciate uh, the balance of knowing that you need people, but also knowing that you don't need too many people on it as well, because it can easily get confusing and complicated uh, mm -hmm. before you realize sure. it. Yeah. Um, Sorry, so, so just, but, just, to, just to mention, right, I think you also mentioned yeah. something that was really good. So like the, like it's more, more or less like a project manager role. You get, so that mm -hmm. is, that is mm -hmm. something, that is something like my nine to five actually can taught me, you get, so, so it's not, it's not something that you can really learn um, with, um, with a book. So it's with knowledge and with experience that you learn that. So. So if you are doing a nine to five right now and you're looking for like let's say you're looking for a reason to stop it. So if you want to do that, um I will not make that choice for you. But I want to say something that no matter what work you do, so no matter what nine to five it is, there is always still something to learn out of it. Even if it's not gonna be um your nine to five on the long run, there is always something to learn at every single time. Yeah, um where you where you see yourself. I love that you mentioned that. I love that you speak about that. I think it just brings me, I think everyone now is anticipating and kind of wondering, what was this guy's nine to five? <laughs> so please tell us more, a little bit in depth about what your nine to five was, what that experience yeah. was like for you, and a little bit more about things that you learned there that you're applying now with, in your creative career. Okay. So I think, so just to cut to, I wouldn't go like, give any backstory or anything, but I'll just give you like the, a brief answer. So I'll be a project engineer. Um, would you like me to mention okay. the company? I mean, I don't really mind. No, you, you don't have to, you can if you want to. Yeah, okay. So the project engineer, I was working with an IOC here in Nigeria, um, Mobile, Mobile Nigeria to be precise. So I was working as a project engineer for, let's say a year plus, yeah, no, sorry. So I was working as a, as a project engineer for about six months. Then I was an intern um, before and getting to a project engineer. And then yeah. what are the things that you saw that you learned there that you are actually applying now in your creative space? Besides, obviously, knowing how to manage a project. Yeah. So number one is how to, how to manage a team of people and also um, how, to, how, to, how to discuss and how to talk with clients and another thing is how to sell yourself as a photographer and as a cinematographer or as a creative to be um, to be precise yeah it's huge as well uh because the creative space we find ourselves in now is very very much competitive there's so many photographers coming up yeah so many different videographers coming up almost like mm -hmm. eggs they're being hatched you know like it's crazy <laughs> so you need to you need yeah. to stand out you need to stand out and i love it i'm not complaining Definitely. i love that there's so many people who are able now to express themselves creatively because back in the day you knew that if you were a project engineer that's what you were for life you ain't gonna change and from a young age, it was either you're a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, a teacher, things like that. And if you were a singer or if you liked painting or you liked sculpting, you were never allowed, even by in the community that we lived in, you were never allowed a space to express yourself that way. So I'm, I'm happy to see that there are more and more creative people emerging and coming out and trying to express themselves and turn their talents into something they can live off. Um, but... Again, it comes back to the point that it's very competitive. Uh, it's not like these guys are just hatching and they're not talented. They're very much creative, very much talented people. How do you, as me, make sure that you stand out in this very competitive space? Okay, yeah. So I think that's that's a really good question. And it's something I think um, everybody, no matter the crafts, you should know how to stand out in your own field. Um, so I myself, what I do to stand out is number one, I try to be different. So different in the sense that yes, everybody has every photographer has a camera, every almost every almost every videographer or um, filmmaker has a drone. But at the same time, I try to take from different angles. I try to work on different projects that haven't been done before. 
But the truth of the matter is, um, if you go to my Instagram page, you see that I've tried to build this kind of aesthetic for Nigeria, in, in, um, especially. So I, I try to shoot from different angles that no other photographer has shot before, although um, some of them have been recreated. Um, but I try to just do something different. So once you do it, like once you take from a different angle, no matter the gear you use, just try and be different. Work with different people, and always work with the, always try your best to work with the best people. In terms of if I have a beauty shoot, for instance, now I already have my my go to makeup artist. You get to so I always like I always beg the client like please just use. Let's let's find a way to use so so and so person because number one, I love her work. Um she makes my work as a photographer or the cinematographer easier when editing and also when shooting. Yeah. So she's very professional, very timely. So just work with the best people and you'll be able to get the best results. I love that so much. Uh, I think that kind of reminded me of uh this thing that I say to a lot of people. It's that when you kind mm -hmm. of find your barber. You just can't change. Yeah. Find the guy who knows how to cut your hair. Even if you travel. I mean, you can go away for six months and you come back and you've got an afro because your guy cuts your hair. So it's it's they know you more than anyone else and they make your job easy. So the makeup artist, the sound engineer, you kind of complement each other. Um, so it, it definitely makes sense that you've been working together on a number of projects. And obviously when you start off, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of communication that needs to be done to get each other on the same page. But once you do, it's hard to change from that individual. So I think I dig that a lot in having almost a quote-unquote set team that you have that knows you and meets you at your point of need. You kind of know each other's weaknesses, you know each other's strengths, and then you exploit each other's strengths and you know support each other's weaknesses at the same time. So I appreciate that. Um, and I think it even goes over and beyond making sure that you support her hustle without even realizing begging your clients to use her makes sure that she gets work. You know what I mean? I think it's pretty cool to have a circle or a network of creatives that's constantly supporting one another and making sure that, you know, everybody gets a piece of the cake. Uh, and I love that and I appreciate that so much. Um, yeah, but you also mentioned something about how you try and capture different angles and different spaces in your country. When I bumped into your work initially, I, I really did not believe that you were in Nigeria. Like that's how good your work is. Um, there's like I, I like I guess there's a stereotype of how Nigeria looks and a certain type of image images and photos and videos that have been taken. And they're almost kind of repetitive if you look at it. Uh, but what you are doing uh, is very different. It's very much aesthetic. And even your color grading. Yo, I can't even begin. <laughs> your color grading is definitely is definitely out of this world. Uh, I love it so much. Um, and I can't wait to see you grow and continue to do more uh, with uh, your content. Uh, but what is your plan? I mean, you've only been in this space for about three years, four years now. What is your plan for the brand that is me yeah. and how do you wish to grow and what do you hope to achieve in the future? Yeah. So um so my long term plan, right, is to <clears throat> sorry, so my long term plan is to remain a photographer. Um so I don't plan on going back to any night to five. I mean I've gotten some offers, let me just put it that way, but I don't plan to do to go back to a nine to five. So my plan is to remain a photographer. Um keep on keep on taking um pictures, videos. But at the same time, I'm looking to build, let's say, a team and also a business that helps people and helps creative to grow. So we have a lot of photographers that are doing that here in Nigeria. Um, so they have their master classes. Um, but I want to do that on the long run. So that's um rather than have it once a year, it's just like a coaching service. So anybody can get it at any time of the year. So that's just my plan. I love that. Um, it's very difficult for me to say I've ever met a photographer who in one way, shape or form isn't trying to give back what they've learned and what they've experienced. Um, yeah. And I think it's such a beautiful thing. I, I don't know how many people really do understand what it takes and what goes into building a decent photography career. It's not easy, uh, yeah. especially yes, starting not. off buying gear and getting your first couple clients. 
people look at you and they're like, can I have a portfolio? And all you have is pictures of your family. <laughs> so I think, <laughs> so it's, I, I, I don't know what it is about creatives. I really do not know what it is about creatives. I know so many people out there who aren't creative or giving back, but it's, I, I, I see so much in creative people. Um, it's the struggle that they go through. But then when they reach almost quote unquote the top or a comfortable space, all they want to do is give back. All they want to do is teach other people. It's like, it's, it's the craziest thing. I, I don't understand it, but I love to see it. I truly love to see it. I think I can only thank God um, for, for that. Um, but we've just spoken about what you would love to achieve and what are your goals and where you want to reach at. Uh, but I think it's always good to stop sometimes and kind of look at where we've come from and where we are at now. Um, and for you from when you started uh, and currently looking at where you are now what has been the biggest lesson that you've learned that's the first thing and what is the one thing that you are most proud of just as an individual maybe or as a creator yeah okay so um so i think the biggest lesson i've learned was it comes in a quote actually so i mean it's a quote by steve jobs so he said um you can't connect the dots looking forward you can only connect them looking backwards so that means there are a lot of us that um, we may not really have, like, the future isn't certain, right? Um, we have our plans, we have our goals. Some things happen that we don't want to happen. But at the same time, sometimes when we look back at what, what happened, um, we can only be, like, thankful to God. Um, like, we're really happy it did happen. So things happen for a reason. That's what I just have to say. That's the biggest lesson I've learned. So... You have to, I mean, you have to always know that something will fall and something will be in its place. So things always happen for a reason, and everybody needs to learn that. Mm, that's huge. Uh, and I, I, I remember asking a couple times on a, a number of uh, podcasts that I recorded, asking people, "Do you feel like if you could do things differently, go back and change what you did, would you do it differently?" And a lot of the times, almost a hundred percent of the time, people are like, "I would never change how things worked out." Because sort of everything that happened, even if it was a bad situation, kind of built them and led them to where they are now. If things had happened in a different way, we have no way of telling how things would have ended. And I think, like you said, ultimately, God is in control. It's not uh, like uh, he's trying to bring us down or trying to hurt us. He's got our best interests at heart. He always has. He always will. And I think the idea is trying to learn from the positive, the negative situations. Uh, build our character, build our faith, build our perseverance. Uh, and I love that you've learned that. And I hope a lot of people can leech off of that and learn that as well, uh, to take each step in the journey as it comes. Uh, and hopefully, like you're saying, something will click. Something has to click. Uh, if you continue to put the time in, if you remain consistent and persistent uh, at your dreams and what you want. Uh, I love that. Um, but you do quite a number of things, and I think we've already spoken about it. Uh, you take photos indoors and outdoors. You, know, you work with your camera. You work with your drone as well. You take videos. What is the one thing that you love the most? Uh, I know for me, <laughs> I absolutely love flying the drone. I absolutely love flying the drone. I think I've got a big passion for eagles. Uh, I've got a big passion for flying in general. So being able to be with the drone and see the world from that perspective, it's mind-blowing. Uh, so I yeah. really, really do love flying the drone. What's your favorite part about all this? Um, so I don't want to say I'm going to copy you, but mine too. That's <laughs> really but it's not, I'm not uh, saying I'm not saying I don't like my camera, but like to be honest, mm. so number one, it's once you learn how to fly a drone, right? I mean, you you really appreciate like the angles you can get, the different things you can do. Um, yeah. um, number one, number one reason is not not too many people know how to use a drone. A lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, are starting to learn this, but um, once you can learn how to use a drone, you you will love it. Trust me. So I mean, I got my camera first, then I got the drone like two years after. Like the drone, mm. I mean, now nowadays I think I use the drone a little bit more than the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, and and you're right, bro. Like it's it's not that I don't like my camera. I love it. Uh, I can yeah. spend so much time on my camera with my gimbal making videos. But mm -hmm. it's the difference in perspective. You know, being on my camera yeah. uh, doesn't really change what I see with my own eyes. Uh, but yeah. being with the drone, I, I only see that once in a while on a flight or in a 20-story building. But even then, <laughs> the perspective, it's, it's not the same. <laughs> you know, it's not the same. So 
yeah. I think I appreciate um, just the difference and the ability to capture God's creation from yeah. those different angles. Uh, mm-hmm. The movement of it all. Yeah, and things. Yeah, you're gonna say things look. Yeah, like the environment looks more beautiful from above. I mean, so God, God has a very good view of of, of us. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm always like, I'm always looking at it, especially when you take it way high. You're like, I'm yeah. so small. I'm so insignificant. Yeah. Uh, you you, t- mm-hmm. you take it up yeah. in the neighborhood and you see 50, 60 different houses, and people yeah. are living their lives right there. You know. And, I things mean, are happening they don't, they like know, they don't know like, they don't even know <laughs> exactly they don't even know so it's, it's i think it's it's beautiful uh yeah the capabilities uh that the drones have and i was going to ask what drone you have and how you've yeah. been finding flying that drone so far if you are looking to upgrade and which one would you upgrade to okay so so for the drone right so what i have is um i don't know if you guys can see this so this is let me put this in focus sorry um yeah perfect so this is a mavic air 2 so this is this has been my drone for the past year so before this i was actually using the mavic air 1 yeah so i was actually using the mavic air 1 before this and i changed the map from the mavic air 1 strictly because the camera wasn't too good and also it had some weight issues but this drone right here the mavic air 2 um i'll definitely recommend it for anybody but now if i had um yeah if i had like the, the 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 choice to change the drone um i'll probably change it to the newer one the newer one of this that's the mavic air 2s and there's okay. nothing different it's just because it has a better camera yeah okay so a lot of people <laughs> will see content creators and they'll see the content and they'll see all the amazing footage of the drones and it's yeah. all beautiful it's amazing we love to see it but what they don't know is these things crash all the time for me personally, <laughs> mm-hmm. I've crashed mine one too many times. Have you ever crashed your drone? Wow. Have you ever had scary moments where you thought, this is it, this is the end, I'm never going to get it back? And can you tell us those stories? Yeah, sure. So um, so I'll start with my first drone, right? So I had um, mm-hmm. the Mavic Air before this. That's the Mavic Air 1. So I was flying in a courtyard, so there were these strings that you, you, can't, really, you can't really see them. Yet. So it's like tiny wires. The crazy thing is that sensors, sensors don't catch this wire. So I was flying. I was with my cousins. Next thing I saw the freon. Then they crashed. I'm telling you. So like the, the gimbal, the gimbal of that room broke. So, oh, and I had to like is that what leg. Is that what messed up the camera? Is that why you ended up changing? No, 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 no. So, so it didn't really mess up the camera in, in like, I just mean like the quality then. But like the, mm. why I ended up changing it was because it crashed a second time. Oh. Yeah. What happened like, the second time? I fixed it. Um, I've forgotten it. I think I was, I was, I was flying somewhere like indoors actually, which is not recommended. I was flying indoors <laughs> and it crashed it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, snap. I love it. No, but it's, it's, well, it's real. These things, these things mm-hmm. happen. And have yeah. you crashed the new one <laughs> at all? Oh, yeah. So I've had um, two major crashes with this new drone here. Um, the first one was the mine. Sorry, I've had one minor crash, one major crash with this new drone. So the first major crash, was, which is the only major crash, was when I was recording at the stadium. And the thing about um, videography is that you can't... Sorry, the thing about drone videography is you have to find a way to hide yourself as the drone operator so that you would not show um, when you are when you are reviewing the footage. So I had to like hide behind the building, which took the drone out of my line of sight. But I also like knew the path. So I just did a quick shot of it revolving around the person. And f- unfortunately this particular drone doesn't have um, sensors on the side yet. So it was going around ab- about to complete the circular motion next thing you heard was bush so it just fell on the floor <laughs> so like um fortunately yeah so fortunately for for me right so it wasn't like at a very high elevation but just like something this low so it just fell from there um but the only issue now is if you put on the drone this particular one mm-hmm. um you just hear um a, a bit of scratch 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 <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> that's funny <laughs> No, but it's real. I think for me, it's, it's such a huge fear. 
being able to fly my drone and uh, yeah. and not crash it. And like you're saying, you need to be as the person taking the video. You need to be out of sight. You know, you don't need to be in the shot. But for me, I'm so scared. I always somehow find myself in the shots, end up copying myself out because I'm so scared to not see what's going on because of that sensor issue that you're talking about. Um, but those are the struggles. That's what we have to live with. That's the the rush and the adrenaline that you kind of get <laughs> from doing this thing, which we love so much. Um, but yeah, I think we're kind of rounding up and getting towards the end of the sit down, which I've enjoyed so much. Uh, it's been such a process. I think for <laughs> people who are watching this, will be like, ah, this went well, but they don't know that we've been sitting here for about two hours now trying to set this thing up. <laughs> yeah, trying to get like a mic, a camera. Um, I mean, and this is what this on, is what our fourth on. time sitting down. We it's so like our fourth time yeah. trying to do this thing. Um, but yeah, this is what you gotta do when you gotta do what you gotta do, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you kind of go through the yeah. motions. Uh, but I appreciate it. I really do appreciate your patience uh, again. Yeah. Uh, for you taking time you. out. No, no, you too. You've been very, very patient with me also. Thank you so, so I much. I appreciate it. I really look up to your work and I really look forward to seeing uh, yeah. more of it. Uh, but just to yeah. wrap around us off. Yeah, thanks so much. For yeah, I appreciate it. It's, 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 it's my pleasure. But just to round us off, uh, I know uh, that the, the, the creative space isn't an easy one. Uh, you've had yeah. your successes. You've enjoyed what you enjoyed. But there are bumps and humps and trials and things that you have to endure. Um, and after you having seen all the things you have to endure, if you were in a position where you were able to speak to a younger version of yourself, you know, three years ago, four years ago, about to embark on this journey, what advice would you give them? Uh, knowing what you know now about the creative space, about life, what would you tell a younger version of yourself to look out for? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so there's this, I, I like quotes in God, right? so there's this quote that goes on, um, do not do not go where the path may lead, but you should go where there is no path and you should leave a trail. Woo! So the reason, the reason why I would tell myself that, right, is, like I said, I try to be different. Um, a lot of, a lot of photographers, um, Nigerian photographers, they, they tend to like do the same thing, beauty photography. Yeah. It's not bad, right? So, so there are a lot of people that are really good in the craft. Mm. But like if you try if you try to be different, um there'll definitely be some setbacks, there'll be some challenges because nobody has gone on that path mm. before. But once you set once you set that trail, I'm telling you, you will have no issues um of mastering your craft and also you will have no issues um getting a certain audience to follow you. That's huge. That's big. Um and I yeah. I do firmly believe that it's not easy being different. Uh, speak to anyone yeah. who's been an innovator, anyone who's uh, been an entrepreneur or creative person who's sparked or set the pace yeah. for a certain kind of uh, innovation that's different. People always look at it and they're scared because people get so comfortable with what they're used to and the fear of changing that and being out of that comfort zone, it scares them to death. So they'd rather stick to what they know uh, and not explore anything different. Um, but if you remain persistent, if you remain proving yourself, if you remain showing the worth of yeah. your difference, people will catch on to it one way or another. I mean, we've got over 2 billion, 3 billion people on the planet. There has to be at least a thousand <laughs> that will like your work, yeah. that will latch on to it. You know? uh, so I appreciate mm -hmm. yeah. the way you think. I appreciate your mind for that. Uh, it's yeah. Thank you so much. don't go where there's the path, uh, create your own and leave a trail for others as yeah. well who might be scared exactly who are waiting exactly. for someone like you or someone like me to leave that trail um mm -hmm. i think the world yeah. just kind of works that way and that some people were meant to be leaders and some weren't um so i like that you, you've got that leadership aspect in you you want to set the pace and you want to revolutionize yeah. revolutionize english <laughs> <laughs> you want to change happy, happy, happy. <laughs> you just want to change the way things are done and, and I'm looking forward like I said I'm a big fan of your work um, definitely going to be following yeah. your journey I'm looking you. forward to seeing you grow uh, and do all the things that God has yeah, for you definitely by God's grace yeah that, that's the end of all the questions that I have today uh, I appreciate it so much uh, once again thank you for being here hopefully you can ho hopefully you can come to SA or I can come to Nigeria we can link up we can make dope yeah, content sure. that'll be dope that'll be lit yeah that'll be dope that'll be dope, that'll be dope. That'll be dope. so hopefully I should be in SA let's say in the next two years hopefully that'll be so that's, 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 that's one of the for plans. sure we should make plans 
to link yeah. up. We should stay in touch and we can make dope content. Definitely. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. I appreciate it. Yeah, sure, man. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Luca. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Subscribe to Lucas' channel if you're not already. And make sure you give the video a thumbs up and um, put on post notifications. I got that right. Yes, you did. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, I didn't even ask you to do it. I didn't even ask you to do it. Nah, don't worry, don't worry. No, that, yeah, good, that means a lot. That means a lot. Yeah. Okay. Big shout, big shout. Yeah. Please. And also, also check out Luca's um, Instagram, right? I think you should just run my channel, right? I think you should just <laughs> take over. <laughs> I think you should just take over, run it, and, and you know, just shout me out and do your thing. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. <laughs> no one's ever shouted me out, actually. This yeah. Last time ever. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Good. good, good. <laughs> Bless. Thank you, bro. Thank you. So yeah, much. sure, man. Sure. Thank you so, so much. It was an awesome time with you.